welcome to EcoBlog. To be or not to be carbon neutral, that is the question. Oh. That was a wonderful performance, Henry. <laughs> Thank you. Is that the question we should be asking? Um, well, definitely the answer to that question is yes, of course. We should, uh, we should be doing our best to be carbon neutral. Um, however, on this particular blog, we're going to talk about demand and supply. What do you mean by demand and supply? Um, so obviously there is uh, demand from the customers for energy and there is uh, supply in terms of generation and that's quite a complex issue without renewable energies but when we start to look at renewable energies we have the added issue of some renewables are intermittent that means they don't always work what happens when the wind doesn't blow thank you for that that question uh, th when the wind doesn't blow, unfortunately, there will be no output from the turbines. So the, the way that uh, we, we, we trade electricity and we generate electricity is over a large geographical area and with as many different source types as possible. So, for example, wind, solar, uh, we, uh, we can also have a tidal, wave, biomass, all these different forms have slightly different um, provision. So in terms of the geographical area, on the Isle of Man, obviously it's a very small geographical area, so there's likely to be relatively small difference between the amount of um, sunshine or wind over such a small area. But if you're covering much larger areas, we'll say initially the United Kingdom, but we are connected through various interconnectors to Europe, so larger geographical area, um, they, they will all average out. So the first way of overcoming the obstacle of problems in supply is to um, work with a lot of different renewable sources, mm. so variety, over a large geographical area. In other words, cooperation. Mm. So just to give an example of different types of renewables and how they can sometimes work together, during the winter months where there is uh, a very, there are very few hours of daylight, we have therefore an overall lower amount of solar capacity. In the, on the Isle of Man, the wind capacity is much greater. So as the sun, sunlight decreases, you have greater wind capacity. Vice versa, during the summer months when there's greater sunlight, the wind capacity is lower. So that, there's a, there are some uh, ways in which they benefit each other. Um, we also have uh, the situation where during the daylight hours, this is on the supply side, there's plenty of sun, but it also happens to be the time when businesses are operating and therefore there's a higher demand for electricity. Um, and perhaps we can also look uh, at another example when there is the highest demand for heating, will tend to be in the windier periods, um, it has a cooling effect. And of course, this, this corresponds well with the production of energy or electricity from wind power. Will this balancing out in a way mean that we'll, our needs are always supplied? Um, in this transition period, no. Um, we would have to have a far greater variety and include things like tidal. Our base load at the moment um, here is provided by our gas turbine which can be turned on and off very quickly so it can always compensate which is a great thing to have it's a great asset to have um, in the UK they also have um, nuclear power they also have interconnectors to Europe um, so they're using nuclear and gas um, pretty much phased out coal hmm. so um, eventually we want to be totally functioning on renewable energy and not using fossil fuels um, but to achieve that, we will obviously need to work on both the variety of our renewable sources, the interconnectivity between different countries, and also storage. Storage is the big issue at the moment. Storage on a local level, so each house can have its own storage. Each car has batteries in it. Mm -hmm. It can become a storage facility that can be then exported from the car if necessary, or storage batteries within each house or on a larger level and whole plants that are just full of storage facilities, either batteries or it's converted to something like hydrogen gas that can then be used at a later stage. 
What was the bit at the start about? Well, we are in a theatre, so these are little alcove seats. This is a 100-seat theatre in the eastern end of Peel Cathedral that I built alongside Simon Park. Gosh, it's absolutely incredible. Thank Truly you. Truly beautiful. <laughs>